Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we are going to talk about enzymes. What are enzymes? How do they work? And why are they needed? Stay tuned throughout this video and you should leave with a better understanding of what an enzyme is and what it does. Enzymes are a special type of protein that work to speed up chemical reactions and aid in metabolism. Metabolism is referred to as all the chemical processes in the body and includes both anabolism, which is building up, and catabolism, which is breaking down. There are many different types of enzymes. Some enzymes help build things up in anabolism and other enzymes work to break things down in catabolism. Our body naturally produces enzymes that are involved in our cellular processes. Enzymes are also in manufactured products and foods. Enzymes work by speeding up chemical reactions in the cell, whether those reactions be for building up or breaking down substances. Enzymes are not destroyed in the reaction, but they can be used again and again. Without enzymes, a reaction could still occur, but it would take a much longer time. An enzyme works as a catalyst. This means that it speeds up a reaction. It does so by lowering the activation energy needed for a reaction to occur. What this means is that when an enzyme is present, then the energy needed for that reaction is lower and it can occur faster. Each enzyme is specific to a particular chemical reaction. There are a variety of enzymes that aid in things such as breathing, ridding the body of toxins, nerve function, and muscle building. The most popular and common type of enzyme that you probably have heard of are those that aid in digestion. Each enzyme only has one job, but again, each enzyme does not break down after its job it can be used again and again. We can identify an enzyme because most of them end in A-S-E. Lactase, for example, breaks down lactose, a sugar found in milk. Lipase breaks down fats into fatty acids. Protease breaks down proteins into amino acids. But how do these enzymes work? Each enzyme has an active site. The active site is a specific shape that will fit a specific substrate. Because of this specificity, we refer to this as the lock and key model. Just as your car key will only open your car or your house key only opens your house, an enzyme will only fit the substrate for which it is responsible for catalyzing the reaction of. The substrate fits into the enzyme just like a lock and key. Once the substrate attaches to the enzyme which it fits in, the chemical reaction can take place. The enzyme will either work to break down the substrate or put it together with another substrate. This depends on the enzyme itself. Either way, whether substances are put together or substances are broken down, the substances that are released from the enzyme after the reaction are referred to as the products. After this reaction has occurred, remember the enzyme is able to catalyze more reactions because the enzyme itself doesn't break down. So the substrate attaches to the enzyme, reaction happens because that enzyme is a catalyst, it happens faster by lowering the activation energy, and then the products are released from the enzyme. Let's take a look at a specific reaction and how this happens. Here we have the substrate, which is sucrose, made of glucose and fructose bonded together. And here we have the enzyme that is referred to as sucrase. The substrate, in this case sucrose, is going to bind to the enzyme in the active site. When it does so, it forms an enzyme substrate complex. Sometimes 
when an um when a substrate binds to the enzyme the enzyme has to do what's called an induced fit which just means the enzyme uh, changes shape ever so slightly to fit that substrate better with the substrate sucrose now bound into the active site of the enzyme sucrase the reaction can take place sucrase is going to work by lowering the activation energy and catalyzing this reaction sucrase breaks down sucrose so at the end of the reaction glucose and fructose which are the breakdown products of sucrose are going to be released from the enzyme remember again glucose and fructose are going to be the products what's released from the enzyme is referred to as products and now the enzyme is free again to be able to catalyze another reaction and can bind again to sucrose another sucrose to allow this to happen again and continuously breaking it down. So this enzyme sucrase can only catalyze the reaction of breaking down sucrose into glucose and fructose. It's always going to engage in the same reaction and the same products would then be made. Not only are enzymes specific to their substrate, but they also have specific temperatures and pH at which they work. Each enzyme is going to work at a different optimal temperature or pH, which is specific to that enzyme. For example, in our bodies, all the enzymes are going to work optimally at body temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. However, depending on where they are in the body and what they're doing, they do work at a different pH. The enzymes in our stomach are going to work optimally at an acidic pH of 3 to 4, while many others in our body are going to work optimally at a pH of 7, which is neutral. If an enzyme that optimally works at a pH of 7 is found in an environment where the pH is 3, it will not work properly and vice versa. So it is very important that enzymes are at their optimal temperature and at their optimal pH for them to work properly. What happens is when an enzyme that works at, say, a normal pH of 7 is found in now an acidic environment of 3, it is going to denature that protein. Remember, enzymes are proteins. It's going to denature that protein so that it is no longer going to work the way that it should. What does denaturing mean? It means that it changes the shape of a protein. So if an enzyme that normally works at a pH of 7 is now on a pH of 3, it's going to change the shape of that enzyme, changing the shape of that active site, and the substrate is no longer going to be able to bind. If the substrate can no longer bind, then the reaction can no longer take place. And so this is why it's important to understand that enzymes have optimal temperatures and pHs. Also, again, temperature can change it too. If the temperature is too high, it can also denature the protein as well, changing the shape of the protein. If the temperature is too cold, it just is going to slow the reaction down. Now I mentioned in the body, in the body, in the body, because we're talking about in the body, but there's other enzymes say in different bacteria that can work at different temperatures, that's their optimal, and um, they can also uh, work at different pHs as well. Obviously, if we think about the whole environment of bacteria, for example, and the enzymes that bacteria have, um, some bacteria can live in very hot, hot temperatures and they're fine and they're happy there. And some can live in very, very cold temperatures and they're fine and they're happy and their enzymes work there. And the nice thing about those is we don't really need to worry about those because our body temperature is neither that hot nor that cold. When we talk about bacteria that can invade our body and be harmful, we have to think about the bacteria that work optimally, their enzymes work optimally at our body temperature pH, our body temperature and pH. Those are the bacteria that are going to be able to infect our body and grow in our body because they also work um, 
at those temperatures optimally. So even though we talk about the body because we are interested in how the body works and how these enzymes work in the body, it's also interesting to take note of the, those examples of how, you know, bacteria that work optimally at our pH and at our temperature are going to be the ones that are going to be pathogenic to us, right? Able to grow in our body, able to um, work at the pHs in our body because that's where their enzymes work optimally as well. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that this helped you to better understand enzymes, get a better grasp on how they're working, that they have an active site binding to that substrate, catalyzing these reactions by lowering the activation energy, meaning there's less energy needed for these reactions to occur, so therefore they can happen faster, they can work to put things together, they can work to take things apart, but everything that comes out of that enzyme's active site is referred to as a product at the end. And um, they need an optimal temperature and an optimal pH in order to work. There's a whole lot more we could talk about with enzymes, at a very specific level and what they do, but this was a basic overview of um, how enzymes work. If you have any questions, comments, please make sure to put them down below. If you ever have an idea for a video, a topic that you want me to cover in the realm of anatomy and physiology, please let me know below. Um, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell so that you never miss out on a new video. Thank you.